Well, hello, my name is Richard Woods. I'm a design review panellist for the Design Commission for Wales. Uh, I'm really pleased to hear that the Hatch, or should I say this time the virtual Hatch, this month is um, exploring the area of post-war uh, modernist architecture in Wales. Uh, and it's a subject that is close to my heart and I think it's really worth um, a close examination. And I want to set out for you four reasons uh, why I think you'll enjoy having a look. I think Bernard de Chartres got it right when he says that we stand on the shoulders of the previous generation. Uh, and I think that's true of uh, architects. And I, as I've been thinking about um, some of the uh, early work of my career, um, I definitely owe a debt of gratitude to working alongside uh, the wonderful Bill Davis. Uh, and I, it may be a bit fanciful, but um, I'm, I'm thinking um, uh, of a school I designed, a Perth Kellen School, a um, little primary school in the Cullen Valley. And I just remember the late 1990s, uh, sitting up late, trying not to uh, wake up my small children, uh, listening to music, very, very low level, listening to the blue tones or something like that. And thinking I um, was uh, a generation before was, was, was looking to how Bill Davis um, was doing lovely Bowen, Dan and Davis uh, little monopitch buildings up in North Wales and he would have been in exactly the same situation playing the Grateful Dead very quietly and he too would have been looking to um, his forefathers to, to the great uh, Alvar Aalto, um, it, where he, he, he was clearly inspired by him. And I can imagine Aalto playing uh, Sibelius at full blast. And these things get in your DNA, they get in your bloodstream. And um, you know, even now, all these years on, um, I can think of, you know, if I see a very beautifully turned uh, vertical fin detail, uh, oh, you know, my heart is melted. That, that, that's, it. that's in my bloodstream. That's the kind of lineage I can detect in all the work that I do. Uh, I think the era from uh, the end of World War II up to about 1979 is a very fascinating uh, uh, part of British culture. Uh, after, undeniably after the Edwardian era, but before global capitalism holds sway, there is this period, you could call it, uh, whether you like it or not, something like uh, municipal socialism. Uh, and architects were right at the centre of this um, desire to create uh, a new Britain. So they designed the new schools and the the, um, new hospitals, the new universities, and in some instances, new towns. And there was, I think, a communal desire uh, to be, be uh, uh, rid of all the slums and the disease and the squalor and the lack of light. And uh, there was a desire for fresh air and bringing the countryside in, places for children to play and so on. And if you look at somewhere like Cambran, it's easy to be a bit jaded uh, this far forward and to think, well, there were failures as well as successes there. And I understand that. But uh, equally, it, it was a fascinating um, undertaking. And there is something very audacious and bold about, for instance, the um, exhaust pipe from the uh, central heating scheme. Uh, it was this really tall pipe and they wrapped 23 stories of residential accommodation around it. Now, it may not be an architectural masterpiece and less so since it's been overclad, but there's something undeniably to my mind fascinating about the boldness of the, the vision behind uh, Cambran Newtown. This one might be personal, but I think there's something really intriguing about the bit of uh, life that just precedes you. Um, uh, and for me, this centres on the figure of uh, Dewey Priest Thomas, who um, sounds like an amazing character, uh, uh, a, a really significant academic, practitioner, uh, advocate for good quality architecture in Wales um, and he just preceded me at the Welsh School of Architecture and then when I went on to my first job at Wynne Thomason Partners um, uh, some of my colleagues had worked with him and had very tall stories about him and he, he seemed quite a kind of mystical figure to me and someone really interesting. So I think the history of uh, post-war Welsh architecture isn't just the buildings and the structures and the built environment and so on but it's also um, the stories of the people as well and that's something uh, we should also uh, cherish and look after those, those stories of the individuals who were key to what happened here. 
Uh, I've been working with the University of Nottingham uh, Architecture School this year on a project based in Harlow Newtown and um, on one of our visits there we went to a rather wonderful and undeniably brutalist housing estate called Bishopsfield uh, and there we met uh, an extraordinary uh, woman, uh, Moira, who is 85 years old. She's an artist, a real live wire. Uh, and she loves her housing estate. And she told the story of how the more committed members of the uh, residential community clubbed together with architects from all around uh, to protest against the potential demolition of Bishopsfield. And they won. And she thinks architects are great as a result of um, how they stood with her. Uh, and I think in Wales there are um, some fantastic uh, buildings and uh, structures to... Uh, seek to protect and seek to advocate for. We, uh, admittedly, we lost uh, Bryn Mawr Rubber Factory, which is a heartbreaker, but there are other many lovely buildings uh, that are out there that uh, we could be speaking up for. There's those beautiful um, houses in Dinis Powys by Hurd and Brooks and others. There is, um, uh, at the other end of the spectrum, uh, Traws Vanneth Nuclear Power Station. There's the, um, the lovely Dale Owen University buildings and many more. And um, virtual hatchers, uh, uh, this is uh, where you can step in and find buildings that you uh, cherish and you think are perhaps overlooked, perhaps uh, worthy of advocacy uh, and tell us about them. Uh, and we want to collect those together and just uh, celebrate uh, the great post-war architecture uh, in Wales and make sure that there, it has a voice uh, uh, for, for, for now and for future generations.